What's going on everybody? I'm Justin Voss if you're new here and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to be comparing three pretty different helmets here. Uh, starting off with the Blue Demon True View Pano which is my newest helmet. Then my approximately 13 year old Miller Elite. This is the helmet I've had almost my entire NASCAR career. Just different coverings on it. And then this Hobart non-auto darkening helmet that I uh, just grabbed yesterday for this video. So we have a comparison between brand new technology, middle older auto darkening technology, and then no auto darkening technology. Plus we got a cool project to work on while we're doing this. So uh, let's get into it. All right, starting off, we're going to need something to weld. We have our Hobart non-auto darkening lens here. This was a shade 10, I believe. So uh, yeah, I have this box of random bearings and parts. So we're gonna pick some cool stuff out of here and make something and go through our helmets and see how each one performs. Definitely gonna use this this thing. I think I'm gonna make some kind of a gun or blaster. Okay, I really don't know where to start other than starting with the main section. I'm going to cut off whatever this was on this piece of tube, this stainless tube that was in here. And we're gonna put it like this and tack it together using helmet number one. Wait. <laughs> All right, let me, let me tighten it. Oh my god. You really gotta find where you wanna weld first. So you can tell I'm having a hard time keeping the helmet from flipping down. It could just be this brand of helmet, but it's something you kind of have to deal with with a non-auto darkening helmet all the time. Since it has to be loose enough to be able to, it's like, I got these about as tight as I can get them. It's like it's kind of hard to flip. I guess not too bad. So with an auto darkening helmet, I could keep the hood down and just spin this. And then this one, <laughs> So this will hold the main part of the gun up. I need one for the front. Oh, I could use that for the sights. Whatever those are made out of wasn't the happiest material to be welded, but uh, I think that's gonna be my last couple welds with the old style non-auto darkening hood here. It's not bad. The biggest disadvantage I would say is when you're trying to really line something up and make sure it's free or whatever, you gotta obviously you have to flip the hood down and then you can't see anything. You can't pre-work and make sure you're still perfect once the hood's already down. Obviously everybody knows this, at least on this one, which this was an inexpensive $22 hood here, and uh, it's pretty clear. It's green when you look through it, but other than that, real clear weld. The biggest disadvantage on this one, other than the non-auto darkening, was the head strap. It was very uncomfortable, like hurt the sides of my head. Besides that, for the money, not too bad. Now we're going to move on to my about 13-year-old Miller Elite. I've had this helmet almost my entire NASCAR career. I bought it pretty early on. I've had a couple different covers on it, but the uh, sensor auto darkening element in here has been the same the whole time. Uh, when I got this, it actually was a Joker. Same Miller Elite sensor I've had for all those years. I don't know when they actually came out, maybe about 15 years ago. And yeah, it is auto darkening. That served me well. So let's try this one out. All right, 
this is going to be the piece that our handle mounts to. And now that I have auto darkening functionality back, I should be able to get kind of close lined up. This helmet actually does have a grind mode uh, where you flip the sensitivity all the way to grind and it does work well and you can see clearly through the lens on what you're doing. I'm always a little weary grinding with my welding helmet on like I don't want to mess up the protective piece of plastic on the outside and this one's a little less convenient because you do have to then roll the sensitivity back to whatever you had it at and kind of remember where you were and then plus doing it with the gloves on. It's a little finicky. Not a big deal for me because I don't usually grind with my welding helmet on, but you can do it with this one. I will say that with welding with this helmet versus the non-auto darkening standard welding helmet, when you are actually welding, they look really similar. Same green tint, pretty clear, other than the green hue over everything. Uh, what's One nice thing about most of the auto darkening helmets is they do have like a protective plastic on the outside and the inside. So when that gets all scratched up, you can replace it. And as far as I know, a lot of the non-auto darkening helmets do not have that. One thing the non-auto darkening helmet has over this one is the field of view is much bigger on the non-auto darkening versus the little one that's in here. But other than that, it's nice to have the positioning sight. You know, like when I'm setting up, I can flip my helmet down and see what I'm getting ready to do. getting there we're definitely getting there uh, this Miller Elite helmet has served me quite well over pretty much my entire NASCAR fabrication career over the last almost 15 years but uh, it's becoming a little dated in its technology and you know like the green tin I talked about but uh, while I was shopping around for a new helmet I've been using Blue Demon filler metals and tungsten for a little while now and they actually sent me out this Blue Demon Pano helmet. So after using this helmet for a little while now, I decided I was gonna make a comparison video between it and my older helmet, and then a non-auto darkening helmet just to get a good range across the board from old to new. 
And I actually reached out to Blue Demon and asked them if they would be interested in sponsoring this video, and they said yes. So thank you to Blue Demon for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to check them out, I'll leave links down below. A lot of their products are conveniently located on Amazon, including this exact helmet. I'll leave a link to it down below. I'll also leave a couple links to some of the filler metals I use and the tungsten I use. So thank you again to Blue Demon for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into our build. Now earlier I welded this together and it's going to go right here to help extend our barrel. Normally if this was super critical I would clamp it because when you tack it stuff has a tendency to pull that direction but since it's just just kind of a sculpture. I'm just pushing it down really hard when I tack the other side to get it back pretty straight. Actually, let's try using it in grind mode. That works pretty good. The biggest thing I don't like about grinding with my helmet is I don't like sparks being thrown at it. Since I primarily TIG weld, I don't have to deal with sparks like MIG welders do. So I just want to keep it nice and clean. If I did a lot of MIG welding, I probably wouldn't even really care because you're going to be changing out your uh, protective plastic a lot more often. But uh, switches back and forth just by pushing this right here, pretty easy. I'd say the only real big disadvantage of like an auto darkening helmet, and this applies for the other one and uh, you know other models, is just having to change out batteries. And they are typically a little heavier. This one's pretty lightweight but I would say a non-auto darkening is probably the lightest helmet you can get. Just has the other downsides. And there it is guys, the Defiant Metal Blaster. At least that's what we're calling it. And I hope you also enjoyed the comparison of welding helmets, all the way from what it's like to use a non-auto darkening welding helmet, if you're not familiar, the OG Miller Elite that I've been using for my entire 
NASCAR fabrication career. And then the Blue Demon panel helmet that I'm currently using. The Blue Demon colors kind of represent the new technology of auto darkening helmet. The Miller Elite is kind of that mid range where it still looks pretty much exactly like a non auto darkening helmet when you're welding. Crystal clear, but that green tint not really true to life that uh, a lot of auto darkening helmets had in that time period. But I hope the comparison was worth your time. Most welding companies now make a true to life, true to color auto darkening helmets. It's just up to you on what you want to buy. Personally, I do really like the Blue Demon panoramic view helmet. I at first thought the side views was kind of a gimmick, but really it's really nice, especially you, you get done striking an arc, you wanna reach around, grab something, you don't have to flip it up. You can, you can actually really see a lot and they auto, auto darken at the same time. And the price point is really on point in my opinion. Thanks again to Blue Demon for sponsoring this video. And I'm like super happy how this blaster turned out. If you'll notice, I'm still using a trigger safety here. Not that I actually have to, being as it is a fake gun and you know, you don't have to have anything to worry about. And All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.